This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride, where we celebrate mediocrity because it's all we've got. This is a review of the Jones flagship. This is the 2020 model. Next to it is the 2021 Ultra flagship. In 2020, the Jones flagship got a major overhaul. It has a more tapered, directional shape, but it also has a more all-day resort-friendly ride that doesn't get cranky in uneven snow like it used to. For 2021, there is one upgrade. It's the same ride as 2020, except it now has the setback inserts that you see in the Ultra flagship next to it. So even though this flagship hasn't changed much, the rest of Jones's line has. So this review is about where this board now sits on the spectrum of the Jones snowboard line. It's a fast, damp, aggressive board with an amazingly fast base that has easy glide. And it's a great board for anybody who wants something that can float well in powder, but also bomb groomers while still being forgiving and easy to skid a turn. So let's get into sizing. I'm right in between the 161 and 164. My weight's a little better for the 164, but my size nine boots are much better for the 161 when it comes to turn initiation. I'm more of a turny kind of rider. Peter's more of a bomber, so he leans a little bit more on the side of the 64. What's cool though, is there's pretty much a size for almost any boot size, almost any weight and body type. Now, when it comes to the shape, it changed a lot in 2020. It went from just having a mil or two of taper in 2019 to 2020, it has 12.5 mil of taper. It's a much more directional tapered ride now, but it still doesn't feel that tapered. There are many boards with less taper that feel like they need more back foot weight. So that's kind of cool. The flagship has hybrid camber along with spoon tech. So what that means is there's camber between the feet going a little bit past the bindings, a mellow rocker in the tail, and then a much more aggressive rocker in the nose that also has lifted sides, AKA spoon tech. The spoon tech begins after the camber ends. So it still has that stable hybrid camber feel. A lot of other boards with lifted sides have it lifted during the camber. So it kind of interrupts the camber and causes the board to feel different in certain situations, edgeless and washy in harder snow. This feels the same in all conditions from hard snow to soft snow. It's a very predictable feel underfoot. It's very easy to skid turns and it's very forgiving for how stiff and aggressive it is. Let's get into the flex here. You can see it's kind of medium stiff in the nose right here. Then you get down in here and it's super stiff. It's stiff stiff. Then down on the tail, it goes back to medium stiff. In comparison to the Ultra Flagship 2021, same kind of thing. Just a little bit stiffer across the board. Very stiff between here medium stiff in the tail. The Ultra Flagship is just a little more stiff than the Flagship. It's a lot more poppy now, where in the past, the Carbon Flagship was more stiff, more damp, and about the same in terms of pop, maybe a little less. Now it's lighter, poppier, and more dynamic underfoot, but it chatters a little more in uneven conditions compared to the regular Flagship. So if you want to ollie, and get a lot of air from it, it's all about the Ultra Flagship. If you want more damp, it's about the Flagship. So both of these boards butter really well for the flex that they have. It's such a stiff, aggressive flex that you would think it wouldn't butter well, but it's almost doable with a good bit of effort. It's definitely not easy, but it's more doable than you would think. When it comes to speed, nowadays, the regular Flagship is the bomber. It's weird, but it used to be the Ultra Flagship was massively better. Now this and the Hovercraft are the bombers in the line. The Ultra Craft and the Ultra Flagship are less bomby in certain conditions. In good conditions, they're more bomby, they're faster, they're better. In most conditions that you see in resorts nowadays with uneven snow, micro bumpy snow, chunder, that kind of thing, all of us here, Peter and myself, would rather be on the flagship and the hovercraft as opposed to the ultra versions. And in comparison to the Stratos, 
The Stratos is much more chattery. That's, that was the deal breaker for Peter and I. We loved everything about that board and it probably would be one of my favorite all-time boards if it wasn't for its chatteriness. It's just so light and poppy that the minute the snow turns, it becomes chattery. Much rather be on this all day than the Stratos all day. The base glide is exceptional with the flagship. It's a centered 9900 base. That's really fast, but then again, the Ultra flagship has their new, I think it's called the Ultra base, something like that, but it's a step up from there. But let's put it this way. The flagship has still one of the fastest bases in the industry, and the glide that you get from this is amazing. I've gotten out of so many long, flat sections on a powder day where a lot of other people were getting stuck and I wasn't. And same with Peter, this just traverses so well and does such a good job at keeping its speed and picking up speed well that it's amazing. So the base glide is, is exceptional. When it comes to edge hold, there is a disruption in the side cut, three major bumps that give a lot of good grip in harder snow. It's not quite the ice specialist like some boards with much more aggressive disruption in the side cut, but what it does really well is it grips really good in hard snow and doesn't grab in soft snow. Now the turn initiation is interesting. Both this and the hovercraft really favor a more straight line oriented rider like Peter. That's kind of what this board is for, but the hovercraft doesn't have quick turn initiation. The Jones flagship is much faster rolling edge to edge. So if you have to get through a tight tree line, I'd much rather be on this than the hovercraft or the Stratos. But this is not quite as fast a turner as the Stratos or the Ultra Mind Expander or the Mind Expander. Those are much all three of those boards are faster. The Ultra Mind Expander and Mind Expander are the fastest. The Stratos is the second fastest, and then these guys. But all of those boards are much more quick in the trees compared to the hovercrafts. Once you get this on edge, the turn initiation doesn't accelerate like it did when you start, but it doesn't feel weird or anything like that. It's just not a circle carver, but it's great for all kinds of turns from medium, wide, and big carving turns. It does pretty well there. It's not an amazing carver, but it sure is a satisfying carve, and it's a lot of fun to do that on groomers. With powder, we love the new setback inserts. The one thing though, is if you ride with a narrower stance like I do these days, like Peter does these days, this is a really wide stance when you're using both setback inserts on the 2021. It's at 23.6 inches wide, which is really wide for this time where I'm riding like a 21, 21 21.5 these days and so is Peter. So you're really freeing your taint with that. So some people might just have to use the top setback inserts to get that front foot a little further back and utilize the rocker and then put it somewhere in here and not use the actual setback inserts. But if you have a 23.6 inch stance width, you're gonna love this board because it's gonna give you much more directional float than the 2020. Add the taper in there, the early rise in the nose, the Spoon Tech, you have an amazing powder board. I don't feel like the Spoon Tech helps too much with float, but just makes it roll and turn and just, it just feels so much more smoother and powder and more fun to ride. So all in all, you have an amazing floater. It's much better than the 2020 model with those setback inserts. So even though the 2021 model has a more tapered directional shape, it still does pretty well switch for a tapered directional board. I found it was easy to ride switch and fun. So all in all, if the Stratos had some of the dampness of the flagship, that would probably be the favorite right now. It's such a versatile every man's board that can do so many things really well. The only problem though is the dampness and it just starts chattering and bucking and bouncing around the minute the snow starts to change from perfect to less than perfect. This flagship, 
is so much better in 2020 and 2021 compared to the older models. It's such a better all day resort ride for those who like to bomb straight line, but still want a forgiving ride that's easy to skid turns. So if that appeals to you, then the 2021 flagships, the call with the setback inserts, but if you can get a deal, the 2020 isn't a bad idea. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average rider's perspective. There's no brand oversight and we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you wanna support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.